Hey everybody, welcome to Buratech. In this episode, we're gonna be exploring the idea, is the no-code movement good or bad? Let's find out. All right, welcome back. For this video, I wanna make sure that you like to subscribe. The more likes and subscribers we get, the more content we can make. So, the no-code movement has been around in some way, shape, or form for a long time, but is it good or bad? Now, I've done a lot of no-code engines and a lot of coding in my time, and personally, I think the no-code movement is really good. But before we even start that video, I wanna tell you a little bit of a story. In the mid-2000s, I actually made a website for myself using a very primitive no-code editor, and I I didn't think web development was a very good career prospect because I said, well, why don't you just use one of these engines and you can make a really good website. I was clearly wrong in that case because people need custom websites and I just didn't think it was necessary because these no-code editors were actually really good. Now, of course, that was a long time ago and of course the no-code editors are much better now. So what's really changed? Why are people still being hired to do JavaScript and all that front-end development. Well, again, nothing has really changed. People do want custom websites and bigger companies require more custom work, so there isn't really a shortage of work for these kinds of developers. But at the same time, though, there are companies like Wix and Webflow that are making website development very easy. On top of that, the no-coding movement has been around for quite some time in the game development world. In fact, in the late 2000s, Game Salad came out, and that was the ability to make an iPhone game without coding. And I made lots of games with Game Salad and it was absolutely amazing. And then Construct 2 came out and as you know, I absolutely love Construct 2 and its successor, Construct 3. I think they're absolutely amazing engines. And the big two engines, that is Unity and Unreal, also have non-coding elements as well. Unreal used to have Kismet, but now it has the Blueprint system, and Unity now has acquired Bolt to add in a non-coding element to the Unity engine. So is it possible to make games and apps and software without code? The answer is absolutely yes. You can actually make a fully-fledged commercial game that you can release on Kickstarter and Steam with Unreal Engine and Blueprints, and the same goes for Unity. So what's really stopping people from using these non-code engines? Well, there's, I think, two major areas. One is that people are qu not quite aware that this is a possibility, and there's other people that are incredibly stubborn. Now, I'm gonna talk about those people in a second. So in the past, using Kismet on the Unreal Engine actually wasn't as good as using the C++ code. In fact, it was quite a bit slower to use this visual programming language. So I think because of that, a lot of people think that the visual scripting gives you some kind of performance hindrance and that might be true to some extent today, but it's nowhere what it was in the past. Again, if you do want more flexibility, like if you really want to make a really flexible game, you're going to have to use C++ or C Sharp. But again, most people don't need that level of flexibility. In fact, a lot of the games, and specifically if you like casual games, can be done with all of these non-coding languages. So let's talk about that stubborn person. There's a lot of people who are purists and they really like to type out the code. For me, I just want to get my product to the customers as quickly as possible. So this highlights the difference between my personality and a lot of other programmers' personality. I am an entrepreneur first and a coder second, and other people are just a programmer and not even an entrepreneur at all. And what this means is that if you're, let's say, like to go into coding, you like playing around with the code, you like tinkering, you spend your free time coding, you like coding. But for me, I like getting the product to the customer as quickly as possible, and oftentimes the coding is an unnecessary hindrance. At least in my view, if I could just snap my fingers and get a new product out there, I absolutely would. Whereas a programmer really likes going through the nitty gritty details of going from A to B with the code. So that kind of person is a little bit stubborn with these visual engines. Now, lots of people who have almost no programming experience can compete with them with an actual product. And there's a little bit of cognitive dissonance there. Now, of course, I'm not saying that you should be one or the other. These mentalities are very good and they're actually symbiotic because if I want to make something, I need to hire a programmer to do something. So that programmer who does and lives the code will make my app for me. Personally, I really like the entrepreneur mindset because you really want to work on efficiency. Why spend 10 hours coding when you can spend one or two? Why spend two hours coding when you can do it in 30 minutes? 
And this idea of efficiency is really good because again, you really don't want to spend time because of course time is money. And if you are a coder, you really have to be cognizant of that. Are these non-coding engines really good? I personally love them and I've been using them for over 15 years and I really like doing that. And even today, if there's a non-coding option, I will 100% take that because what I like to do personally, again, because I have the entrepreneur mindset first and the programming mentality second, is that I can get an idea out there and test it with customers and if they like it, then guess what? I can double down on it. And if they hate it, well, then I can go do something else. And I think this is a lot more time efficient because time is very finite. And one of the things you can do with these non-coding engines is let's say you do make a website or an app or a game that's really, really big, then if you're making so much money, you can always move it and hire a bunch of programmers to make it in C++. Now, of course, getting a prototype out there doesn't take that much time, but getting a fully fledged game with C++ programmers and a lot of backend, that will take exponentially a lot more time. So you do have to be aware of that as well. So should you use non-code engines? I say absolutely yes. It is a very efficient way to use your time because you can test out your ideas early and often. And if an idea is great, you double down on it. If it's bad, well, you can try a new idea. All right, so that concludes this video. I wanna know your comments down below. Do you like non-coding engines? Would you rather code with actual typing? Let me know in the comments down below. Remember that this channel doesn't do Patreon and we sell our digital products down below. More money you get from the content that you buy below, the more free content on this channel we can make, and it helps out my company, Mammoth Interactive. If you really like this channel, you can subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. We release 20 to 60 hours of fresh new content per month, every single month. We have a monthly and a yearly offer. Option. It really does help me out when you subscribe to Mammoth Interactive. It is the best way to help build this channel and our goal is to get to 10,000 paid subscribers on Mammoth Interactive. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.